come this time next year, either a former band frontman or an Ironman athlete could be sitting in Jean-Claude Juncker's office. Europe's centre-right politicians arrive in Helsinki for the annual European People's Party conference, where tomorrow they will choose their lead candidate for commission president. A race between party favourite Manfred Weber, backed by Germany's Angela Merkel and Austria's Sebastian Kurz, and underdog Alexander Stubb, a bit of an outsider, not currently a member of the European Parliament. All right, Maria, you were watching this closely, definitely. What, what are you watching out for? Well, first of all, we need to see who will be picked by the European Popular Party to become the leading candidate for the uh, next European elections. And we have these two candidates. But there is a second thing, which is, uh, which is the programme uh, proposed by the European Popular Party to European citizens. And I think that uh, this is part of a larger uh, discussion we have in Europe uh, on whether should we go on as it is with Europe, and this is Europe at the status quo, or we want Europe but a different kind of Europe. And still now it is uh, the biggest uh, party still in Parliament. But and APP could... for me represents the forces of the status quo, those who think that things in Europe are okay and they are acceptable. Mm. Uh, this is not my position. I think we need uh, to have Europe, but a different kind of Europe. As, as you were saying, I mean, the, we want to find out who that candidate will be from the EPP group. Well, let's take a closer look at the two men in the running for the EPP's Spitzenkandidat. First stop is Manfred Weber from Bavaria. He's 46 years old. He was first elected to the Bavarian State Parliament in 2002 and then to the European Parliament in 2004. And he's currently leader of the EPP and he was the front man of a band called the Peanuts. I bet you didn't know that. We we also have a former Finnish Prime Minister Alexander Stubb, he is 50, and like Weber, he was also elected to the European Parliament in 2004. He is currently the Vice President of the European Investment Bank and he has run Ironman triathlons. But the two contenders, uh, they took time out for a friendly tweet at the EPP Congress. In it, 50-year-old Stubb posted, hashtag next generation Europe. All right. Our political editor, uh, Darren McCaffrey, he is actually at the EPP conference in Helsinki, and he is joining us now. Darren, give us the lowdown. What's happening there? Uh, good afternoon from a very dark and damp uh, Helsinki. However, thousands of delegates have gathered here to decide who the Spritzen candidate, the lead candidate, will be for the EPP. And my word, Tessa, if there is one way, I suppose, to get to a voter's heart, it's clearly through the uh, stomach. Uh, Alex Stubb has set up this rather impromptu uh, hot dog uh, vending stall. And uh, by looking at the queues that have been queuing up here all day, uh, if he gets a vote for everyone he's fed, he'll be doing uh, particularly uh, well. Now. There is likely to be a debate, uh, we reckon, uh, tonight between the two candidates and then tomorrow uh, the EPP delegates will decide which one they want to be the Spritzen candidate. Let's bring in these two MEPs, Maria McGuinness, uh, who is with the EPP, and of course Anna Maria Bild as well. Um, just we're going to talk about the Spritzen candidates uh, process first. Who are you backing? Well, I'm backing the democratic, open, transparent process that the APP is driving forward. I think it's great that we're going to have an open debate between the two candidates and that APP has produced such an outstanding, outstanding candidate who both really could, could make uh, a, a big, big impact on, on the future of Europe. And I'm chairing the debate between the two candidates ah. live very shortly. So as the moderator, you know you have to be very impartial. So I'm chairing and I'm impartial. But I think what's really significant, and it, it happened the minute we landed here, these candidates are taking nothing for granted. So there's no sense of, oh, this is just a campaign. It is such a tough campaign for them because it's pan-European. Um, and I think from a, our party point of view, we're lucky to have two people who are in this race and are in it for real. What, what do you think the, the main issues are? What, 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 are you, what are delegates, what are you guys talking about over these few days? For me, it is about values. This family here today, the APP is really joining forces to stand up for our core values of democracy, freedom and the rule of law. And we are very aware of the challenges with populists to deliver concrete results to our citizens, to move the European Union from buildings to the streets of Europe and make everyone feel home. 
Yeah, and I think in Europe. Yeah, but Victor true. Orban yeah, is yeah, an issue yeah. here, and Hungary yeah, and how yeah, to deal yeah. with that issue as well. We have a resolution on the rule of law that will be debated, I expect, between our candidates. We are a huge family, as you can see here, and I mean, everywhere you stand, you meet new people. Uh, and I think what's very important for these gatherings is that we work away on our own, and then we come together and we debate, and there's differences, uh, and very strong differences sometimes, but we can have these debates. And going back to the point you make about values and the future. I think sometimes we are obsessed about a Europe that doesn't work when in fact there's an awful lot about the European Union that does work. So part of the campaigns that our candidates are running is also about being positive, not about just giving people more and more anxieties. It's actually saying we can deliver for the people of Europe. And I'm really looking forward to chairing this debate. I've no idea how it will go, so I've got a, I think I've got a 40-minute window. And then tomorrow morning the two candidates again will yeah. be making their set pieces. Just, just in regards to this this prison day candidate process, I mean, how concrete, how assured are you that this will work next year, that whoever has decided that this, this process will still be in place? Because there are suggestions that the council will still just decide someone they want. The focus here is to see to have an upcoming commission president that can take responsibility to solve citizens' problems, to manage migration, to provide security and safety within the European Union at our external border, to double our efforts on climate change and sustainability, and to create jobs and growth and make Europe a global competitor that yeah. ripes the benefits of digital very, revolution. Very, very, very quickly. Uh, look, all of those things are there, and I think that's why we're here as an EPP group, that we see Europe as being a solution to many of the problems, where, whereas others see Europe as a problem. That's not our style here. We're a very positive and forward-looking party. And we have two brave candidates, and I believe that whoever comes out of this will actually be the next president of the Commission, because the Council have to respect the views of the electorate, who will decide. Well, we're going to have to wait and see if that does happen. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, enjoy Thank the rest you. of the time in Helsinki and the debate tonight, uh, which, of course, we'll have coverage of that tomorrow. And indeed, wh whoever wins this uh, process, as I say, we are test expecting an announcement, we think, around lunchtime uh, tomorrow, and then we'll hear uh, from uh, the winning uh, candidates. All right, thank you for that, uh, Darren McCaffrey and his guests, uh, Murray McGuinness and Anna Maria Corazza Bilt. All right, well, there's going the hot dog way is one way, but I mean, with the support of Angela Merkel already, uh, Manfred Weber is he a shoe in? Well, I mean, but one thing I want to say about Manfred Weber is that outside of Bavaria and Brussels, no one knows who he is. And similarly, Alexander Stubb, outside of Finland, where he was prime minister for not quite a year, and Brussels, no one really knows who he is. So this idea that these are some titans bestriding the European stage in a kind of American-style presidential race is just a crop. But they are talking to their party, I mean... Well, yeah, exactly, but, you know, they're, they're talking about the, the European demos, the European electorate. It's not. These are people who are talking to each other in a room in Helsinki. And, you know, look, I understand. You've got to build up, if this is the way you want to go, you have to build up this mm. habit. But the idea that the European people are going to go and vote in the European Parliament elections because they are motivated to select the president of the European Commission is frankly, well, it's what Bill Gates has in his jar. <laughs> Which we'll find out later. All right, Maeve, uh, just to bring up Maria's point earlier about whether this is continuity or change, do you think uh, this, uh, the EPP is looking to continue what Juncker had, had done or to change, deviate from that? Absolutely. I think they're going to stick to their line. Continuity As Marie then. McGuinness said there, she said, we're a family. And the problem is they're shiny, articulate, middle class, wealthy, well-educated. Yeah, but despite what's going on in, in and Europe. And they're out of touch with reality. Because when mm. I ask MEPs from the EPP group, what are you going to do to address a number of issues or address populism? They just criticise the populists, the others who are not convinced about the project, the EU project, as opposed to looking at themselves and asking themselves what uh, they are doing uh, differently. And my other question is, we just saw two very articulate ladies there interviewed by Darren McCaffrey in Helsinki, how come there's no women uh, being put, put forward by the European People's Party as possible candidates that would head the European and Commission? To, to that point, I mean, I would put this to you, Maria, because mm -hmm. you have a German and, and a Finnish man, and you are from Portugal. I mean, is this representative? It's not their fault where they're from, but is this representative of the, of the Europe uh, moving forward? 
Well, we have now, in fact, uh, leading men and leading women. Eh? And it's very important that uh, the European uh, parties, they work with these leading teams, with men and women. Eh? This, this uh, should happen. But let me tell you that is important, the discussion is taking place now, because in fact, and uh, that I have a different opinion, it's very important that when citizens vote, they feel they can influence not only the composition of the European Parliament, but somehow the choice of who will be the next president of the European Commission. Yeah, but if someone from um, Portugal, they look at uh, someone like Manfred Weber, Alexander Stubb, will they feel connected to, to that? Uh, well, in fact, uh, uh, as I told you, uh, these candidates represent the Europe of status quo. Mm -hmm. Those who think that we don't need to change how things are going. This is not at all my position. Uh, and I'm at the heart of the European decision here. And I see that uh, EPP so far has been blocked the real solutions we need for. When it comes responding to climate change, moving to a different kind of cars, well, this, we need this. When it comes protecting uh, people in new kind of jobs we are having in the digital world, where we really need to make sure that everybody has a contract and social protection. Uh, when it comes uh, negotiating big trade deals where we should also be able to protect our standards, mm -hmm. in all these issues, the European uh, Popular Party is not in favor of this, uh, is really blocking the solutions. So All that's right. why I think we are going to a big choice in Europe mm. uh, between those who want to have this Europe, those who want to change Europe. And uh, if we don't go to a change in Europe, we'll have worst, which is those who want to make the European Union you want to collapse. Take point. I'll give well, you 10 just, seconds. Sure, Ken. just 10 seconds. I just wonder that if you were walking down the street in, in, say, Lisbon and you showed people a picture of Manfred Weber, they'd even know who he is. I doubt it. Well, no, but, they uh, it, it will circulate now across Europe and the, the same will happen with the other candidates. For instance, from uh, uh, the uh, Socialists and Democrats, we'll have Franz Timmermans also circulating. He is more renowned, in fact, because he's the, the first vice president of the European Commission. Uh, and well, I think, and I think it's is, important to have people with executive experience in European front. All right. And no, because nobody knows those two men yet, but if Alexander is under sub, he loves himself, he's obsessed with himself, he and he's a bit like a Juris Albani, so at least he would put his <laughs> face out there and make sure by the end of his mandate people know at least his name. All right, Unlike well Junkert. then, we'll find out uh, tomorrow when, when the, the result is actually out, that vote happens.